I was assigned to represent an 18-year-old girl who was in a jail called the Workhouse in St. Louis City. Her name is Destiny. I uh, went to the workhouse, I met with her. She'd been there for seven months. There was a fight between a bunch of kids, and she was there, and she saw it. So the next day, police found her, and they brought her in for questioning. She answered all of their questions. She told them who was there, what she saw, what happened. She gave names of people. She was never given an attorney. And at the end of that interview, after she cooperated, she was arrested, she was placed in jail, and she sat there for seven months because she couldn't afford a few hundred dollars for her bond. When I met her, she had not seen somebody from the outside of that jail for five months. I told her, look, you're going to go to trial in two weeks. You've got a great chance of winning this. Here's your case file. It's this small. And in there, there's an eyewitness who says, you were there, but you didn't do anything. Just like you said. She looked at me and she said, no. I don't trust the system. I want you to call the prosecutor and cop to anything, whatever they want. I can't be here anymore. While I was in jail, the court accepted me as her attorney so I could see her case file. And when I left, I looked online and I saw that the case against her had been dismissed 15 days before I ever met her. And she was sitting in jail for no reason whatsoever, other than the fact that she's poor, other than the fact that the system is broken. Destiny is right. The system is broken. The system and many of our other systems do not work for people who do not have money. They work for people who have money and power and lawyers. And the reason for that is because these people have used their power to hijack our democracy. Our democracy is broken. Our government doesn't represent us. It represents them. And now they're using this stuff called dark money to do it. Dark money consists of these anonymous campaign contributions. So when you donate to a candidate, and I know one, he's great. <laughs> when you donate to one, you've got to give a bunch of personal information. You've got to give your name, your address, who you work for, what you do. And that information becomes public. We publish it so that we have transparency, so that we can hold people accountable. We see where the money's coming from. We sue who they are. Now, if you have a whole bunch of money, you hire a bunch of attorneys, and you start a fake charity. You can call it whatever you want. This fake charity then takes all of your money, and it spends it on candidates, on issues, on initiatives, whatever it wants. The difference being that the charity does not have to release the name of any of its donors. It takes those names and cleanses them, so we never see them. And the idea is to eliminate transparency so that we are eliminating accountability. We don't know who they are, we don't know where they're from, and we don't know what they want. Missouri has become a hotbed for dark money. Our state. In 2016, dark money got a governor elected to office. Fast forward just a little bit, and that guy's indicted for everything under the sun. But he's not going to quit. He won't quit until the House of Representatives investigates him for dark money. They look at this fake charity that he started, and they say, this is corruption. This is illegal. He's taking all this money from people we don't know, and they are buying something in our government. They go to a judge, and they say, Judge, we need to see the names of these donors. You know what the judge said? Yes. You can see the names of all of them. And just a couple of hours later, the governor quits. <laughs> all of the investigations stop. 
And off he goes into the sunset with no transparency and no accountability. So I thought that was wrong, and I am taking them to court. A lot. All of them. Every single one of them. <laughs> Everyone. This dark money stuff is not just an accounting trick used by wealthy people. It is literally breaking our democracy. It is the reason why our government isn't looking at our failing schools and actually fixing them. There's a reason why our health care costs are high and we're not fixing it. There's a reason why our roads are broken and we're not fixing it. Why our phones are ringing off the hook from these robocallers trying to steal our money and we're not fixing it. It's because people with money and power and attorneys don't care. They don't have to deal with that. Our government is working for them and not for us. But it doesn't have to be that way. And we're going to fix it. And we're going to start by taking back the Attorney General's office. <laughs> and when we do, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to end dark money in Missouri. We are going to investigate these fake charities. We are going to push our legislature to enact serious reforms to actually protect the integrity of our elections. And we are going to take down the for sale sign sitting out in front of Jeff City right now. All that's going to be gone. Second, we're going to prosecute public corruption. Our elected officials are no longer going to be allowed to trade their offices as get-out-of-jail-free cards. We are going to bring accountability back to Jefferson City. We are going to do it. Third, we are going to fight the influence. Yes, we're into it. We are going to fight the influence of big money in our politics. This campaign is not taking any big money whatsoever. We are not going to do it. Fourth, we are going to protect all of our health care. All of it. We are going to immediately withdraw Missouri from this terrible lawsuit designed to eliminate protections for people with pre-existing conditions. We are going to withdraw the state from that lawsuit. We are going to fight to make sure that our hospitals throughout our towns in Missouri stay open so that people have access to health care. And we are not going to enforce unconstitutional laws in the state of Missouri when we take back the Attorney General's office. We are not going to do it. And fifth, we are going to fix our broken justice system. We are going to end debtors' prisons in this state. You should not be in jail because you're poor. You should not be pulled over in our state at double the rate of white people because you're black. We should not be spending millions of dollars criminalizing people and locking them up when we can spend less money on more effective programs that actually reduces violence and builds communities in the neighborhoods we have neglected for far too long in this state. <laughs> and 
And finally, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff we're going to do too, <laughs> but for purposes of today. Finally, we are going to build the community that we need in Missouri, the community that pushes our state forward in a way that we can all be proud of.